is the man with the master plan. The feet with the motherfucking balls. Who is the man with the master plan? <laughs> the motherfucking footy fetish. Yeah. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, soldiers of the footy fetish army. It's about that time again, baby. It's about that time to run you an hour of some feet and balls. <laughs> All up in your grill. I'm back. It's your booty. With his Ocho, what's going on, baby? Yeah! I'm back on the mic. With the mic, Daddy. Mike, Daddy, pleasure to be back here with you on the Footy Fetish Show. How have you been? I've been doing good, man. Just chugging Mountain Dew like a champ over here. Uh, but um, <laughs> I'm super excited. Uh, we're, uh, we're recapping a little something-something today. A little something-something went down on, on Saturday. What's that little something-something we talking about? A little Champions League final, baby. Ended up being a, a screamer. Champions! Champions! Cue it up. Get the violins ready. Mm. There it is. It's violin love. Yeah, man, we got we to gotta recap it. Ocho and your booty had a, had a phenomenal, uh, you know, our second annual final, by the way. Uh, mm-hmm. this, this time we, uh, we went balls to the wall. Now that COVID uh, restrictions are getting lifted here in NOLA. Had a fun time out there at Parlay's. Shout out to Parlays, thank you, thank you for everybody that showed up. Parlays, yeah, fun time, fun time. Uh, you know, we didn't we didn't go live, but we still recorded, still recorded live. So that was, that was pretty fun. Uh, some Jersey giveaways, made some friends for life. Met a girl named Chelsea who loves Chelsea. Can't forget that. Mm. Chelsea going Chelsea, baby. Dropper, dropper. Yep. You don't want to see that. <laughs> so yeah, fun time. We got some uh, we got some studs here with us to, to break down this game. Uh, Hugh. Please take it away. These two studs, these are brand new guests on the episode, so you know what we got to do. We got three questions to ask these two these two gentlemen. Absolutely. First on the episode, we're going to introduce the uh, the winner here, Emmanuel Hernandez, who uh, goes by Manny, the Chelsea fan. Welcome to the show, Manny. How you doing? I'm doing good, bro. Glad to have you. Glad to have you. All right, next up, we got the Man City fan, Josh Martin. How you doing, Josh? Well, you know what? Uh, the time that I spent watching the game was about as sad as the result. You know, just uh, you know, three guys sitting in a bar uh, alone, uh, tears in our beers. Uh, <laughs> oh fuck! <laughs> oh man, I know the pain. I know the pain. That's Not- that's the, uh, the the beauty of soccer, man. You got to lose some to appreciate the wins. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not not quite the celebration that I wanted, you know. But yeah, it's, that's true. It's what it is. Very true. So, on the Footy Fetter Show, whenever we have new guests, we always like to ask three questions. <clears throat> we'll pass it off to Manny first. Manny, first question: What is your first memory of soccer? Whether it's playing it, watching it, or being introduced to it. Um. All right. First memory I ever had was. I was six or so, and my brother and my older cousin, who basically introduced me to the fucking game, were watching Champions League AC Milan, like that prime AC Milan team. God, it was ridiculous. I forgot, they were playing some random European team in Champions League, so it was not a contest. But I was like, I remember watching, I, was, I think it was Taka, just like tearing people apart. I was like, oh, I fucking want to do this. <laughs> That's one of my first ever memory of it. Fucking right. Love that, man. Love that. We're getting a little bit of a static on the audio, but we're just going to keep rolling. Anyway, we'll move right ahead. Josh, what is your first memory of soccer, whether it's playing it, watching it, being introduced? Uh, Playing, 100%. Uh, let's see. So I don't know how familiar you are with Lafayette, but uh, we used to play at Neyland Park. Now there is a... Uh, rec center on top of it but uh i remember playing out there uh no nets in the goals uh i think our team name was like the monkeys or something we had like these uh polyester white shorts and uh actually man city blue uh tops and uh that's that's probably my my first memory uh i think it's it's co-ed co-ed mixed boys girls i think uh soccer was still relatively new to the lafayette area at the time so very cool. Very cool. I love hearing those those first memories of playing. Those are always fun to listen to and, and hear about. 
Uh, second question, I'm going to pass it over to Booty. Booty, you know the second question. Always. Y'all kind of answered it already for us, but uh, yeah. let's see. Uh, my man Manny, who's your favorite club? And why? Hey, yep. You got to tell <clears> us why. Definitely easy why. My brother's a huge-ass fucking Arsenal fan. He's about nine years older than me, so I was like, I'm going to like everything you fucking hate. <laughs> and, dude, I came up with Robin and all them, obviously – I know I came in when Roman came in and supplied the money, baby. I was fucking like nine. <laughs> so I ran with it. I ran with the up and downs of it. These are chaos. So, <laughs> so it's definitely my club. That's beautiful, baby. We like to hear that. We like to hear that. So, Josh, you like Manchester United, right? Whew. <laughs> <laughs> Sucker punch me here. <laughs> uh, so, so funny enough, um, like uh, – I, I actually, I didn't uh, have cable until I was like almost out of high school. And the only soccer that I could watch was Man U. And that's because everybody uh, that I played uh, club and high school with, that's, that's who we watched. And I mean, they, you know what, they, they, were, they were delivering to America anyway. Like they were selling that product to America at the time. So they were just really big in uh, uh, especially this area. But um I actually watched a I, I watched a lot of them uh, right around the David Beckham era, but uh, no, no, not a not a Man U fan. Uh, I am a City fan, and anybody who's <laughs> playing against Man U, so. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. So this last question we always like to ask everyone: Who are your favorite players? And we'll do one from the past and one from the present. If you have a few more, go ahead. We'll pass that over to Manny. So from the past, it's definitely Alessandro Del Piero. Kind of like one of the guys I always try to play like, you know, is always super creative. And, you know, obviously what he done for Juventus in Italy. Present, it's Mason Mount. Best English center mid coming up. You would say that just to troll, just to trigger me. You would totally <laughs> say that just to trigger me. And for the record, I'm also triggered that you said Juventus and Pirlo, and you didn't even mention AC Milan. Come on, bro. I'm triggered. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Forgive. Uh, come on, man. Kaká on the ball. Dude. I was like, oh, it is. this dude is so smooth. It <laughs> is all about Kaká, though, at AC Milan. It was a lot. So, Josh, who is your favorite player, past, present, multiple? Who do you got? You know what? Uh, you should know this already, but I am a massive Ronaldinho fan. I'm uh, Mostly because there are things that he can do that uh, no magician can do <laughs> except for him uh cat right. and it but what really does it for me is like just uh if you go back and watch any video of him i mean there's rarely a moment where you don't catch him smiling and that's yeah. like that's what it's about for me right. but uh right now um and i mean i know that they're about to re retire but uh i love uh luca madrid uh although mm, bernardo silva uh i love david watching him play but uh you know they're proof that these guys are just phenomenal athletes and wizards with the ball and they don't have to be massive athletes or anything to uh to really control the outcome of a game so yeah i agree i agree good picks good picks i like those like those so as booty said we are doing the champions league recap i think it's time to just jump right into it over the weekend saturday May 29th, we had Manchester City face off against Chelsea for the 2021 Champions League final with Chelsea walking away with the trophy, 1-0. Trophy going back home to London. Uh, really quickly, Chelsea won the game with only 40% possession to Man City 60 and eight shots to Manchester City 7 with two on target for Chelsea and one on target for Manchester City. Chelsea came out with a 3-4-3 or a 3-4-2-1. And Manchester City came out with a 4-3-3. Uh, I'm going to pass it over to Josh to just kind of break down uh, the Man City starting lineup and just anything that you uh, that you saw at the start of the game and want to share. You know what? Uh, and and we, we talked about this. Um, you were surprised as hell that they put Sterling on there, but I think facing Chelsea in the 
EPL and FA Cup uh, that many times in a season and then finding him in the final, I mean, was probably the worst thing that could happen to, to Man City because – but that being said, uh, you know, they got a lot of depth on the team. I had I had confidence in Sterling. We saw uh, two or three decent opportunities right there early, and I think that's really what they were leaning on. Um, I thought that they were going to uh, not try and possess as much this game. Uh, in fact, I had a drunk guy behind me screaming about why they weren't possessing more. Uh, <laughs> I figured... <laughs> Like, you know what, they're trying, they're going to try and get up the field. They're going to try and uh, put one or two in early. They're going to try and use their speed. That's why I figured that they would throw a Sterling on there. And, you know, obviously a Mares. But I also think that they were uh, looking for a little bit more from uh, KDB. And, uh, I mean, look at this. That's, I mean, that to me, that's not a, that's not a KDB uh, player rating right there. Like a 6.3. I just felt like uh, it, outside of the first, like, maybe 10 to 15 minutes. I thought he was more or less a ghost until he got clobbered in the eyeball in the second half. I, I don't remember what minute it was, but <sighs> yeah, About I think it's 60th that, minute. 60th. Okay, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I figured we would have more KDB, uh, definitely more presence. That's what I looked for. Uh, Cause I mean, he's just that guy that can hit those passes, but uh, playing him as a, I, I guess he was more or less like a false nine. I don't know that I would call him a center forward. Uh, but I looked for more Gundo on two. And uh, Gundo just, he wasn't as there as I wanted him to be. I, I just don't think that anybody really played uh, the way that they should be able to play. And um, you know what? Uh, I'm not Pep. I don't know what he was trying to do to inspire them. I feel like. The strategy was there. I, the execution was not. And uh, you know what? Maybe part of that was just trying to change their their philosophy of the game a little too much going into this match. I don't know. If you would have if you would have been Pep, what lineup would you have run going into this game? <sighs> it's I, honestly probably not much different than this. Uh, I don't know that I would have started like a four three three. I probably would have. Um, intentionally dropped KDB a little bit more and push Gundogan a little bit higher and then maybe let Sterling and Mahrez play a little bit wider just to kind of stretch that field a little bit, let them drop those balls in behind and then uh, try and get back inside and play them back across. Um, yeah, and that's, I mean, it's more or less what we saw for maybe the first like 10 minutes, but uh, after that, um, I mean, you, you brought up the stats. We had, what, three on target the entire match? One. No, I, I mean between the two teams. Oh, yeah, two teams, three I, total. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm shocked by that. So that's yeah. not not the uh, Champions League final that uh, I had imagined going into this, that's for sure. But, you know, I'm just a, I'm just a lowly, lowly cook. I don't, <laughs> I don't manage a team. I'm just a lowly cook. Yeah, so from my point of view, I, I'm going to just get some real hot takes out the way. Zinchenko on the bench. Cancelo, you're starting. Uh, also, Rodri, I want you in front of my two center backs. That has seemed to work the most throughout the Champions League. And Gundogan is just not a, a cent center defensive mid, especially his form this season. It's yeah. been with him going forward and getting involved in the attack. Having him drop back and having De Bruyne play a false nine, I just don't see why that was the 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 philosophy for this game. I understand Conte is a really big force, and maybe he was trying to get a little bit more speed in the midfield maybe, and that's why Rodri sat the bench. But I would rather have Rodri in front of Diaz and Stones because then you do what the modern philosophy is, which is take that center defensive mid and have him drop deep between Diaz and Stones, get – Cancelo and Walker up and wide, and then you can you can basically attack with a three man back. And now you overload the midfield. You now have like a three four three or a three five two if you ask De Bruyne to step in. I thought that Man City got stretched out way too much with this formation. Well, I was going to say at the same time. Uh, I mean, you saw on that counter when they finally scored. It was like the forty first or forty second minute. Uh, I mean, it, you you had two back at that time. Uh, and I mean, that's, that's basically, that's how they got caught with their pants down. They had, they, you know, their two center backs were, were too far forward. And then, uh, Zinchenko 
too far off. I mean, he was pulled all the way to the middle of the field when they finally played that ball over to Havertz. And, I mean, I saw it. I was like, now Ederson's going to come out and he's going to end up getting chipped. Which, he didn't get chipped, but thank- thankfully he scored because uh, Ederson definitely would have ended up with a red card. And then it probably would have just been a disaster for Man City after that. Well, I don't know. We would have been able to see Zach Steffen come in. That would have been pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. That was a hot take again. Uh, well, I was looking at a picture of him today. I was like, that's a lot of gray hair. Sparked him when he came off the bench. <laughs> One more thing I got to say, and I'm going to pass it over to Booty, is I wanted to see Aguero start. This is his last fucking game, dude. Put him on the field. He's been working his fucking ass off to try and get Man City in the Champions League final. God, that fucking pissed me off. And you have Sterling. And out of form, Sterling, that's who you start? Man, that's disrespectful. That is so fucking disrespectful if I'm Aguero. And the speed, rain, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, man. Speed pep- don't mean shit if you can't touch the ball, man. Sorry. I'm done. Booty, go. <laughs> pep on Pep, baby. Uh, I mean, we've we, we, we seen it. He did it again, man. He just can't help himself sometimes, can he? Um, disappointing, dude. Um to, to piggyback on what you just said, where was where was Rod Reed in the starting lineup, man? He's been great. Uh, Foden on the left wing. Why is Sterling? Sterling, dude, really? I can't I can't get over that, man. I just can't. Uh, and again, I I can't get over that with Pep. It, it's like we get we get to the promised land. You want to start playing fucking games? I, I I don't get it. Why wouldn't you go with what you know, what's been working for you, all through this knockout stage? Um, I I I don't get it. I don't get it, but. It, like my man just said, dude, I mean, we just buy the groceries. We don't cook. So, uh, <laughs> when it, Pep, Pep needs to start. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know what it is, dude. But, I mean, he's never going to get this monkey on his back when he likes to play games in, in semifinals and finals. We've seen, we've seen it against Tottenham a couple of years ago. He, they could blame VAR all they want. We know he made changes that game, too. Um, I just don't get it. I don't get it. Um, and then, like you said, Hugh, I mean, you taking the words out of my mouth. Uh, a guy who the last time we saw him in a big game in the Champions League couldn't fucking hit the blind side of a fucking, you know, a, a fucking hippo's ass, man, like standing right in front of the goal. <laughs> Wait, are um, we talking about Timo Werner again? Yeah. We sometimes get those confused, yeah. We yeah, will get uh, there. Trust me, we'll I, I, am, I am holding <laughs> that one back. Maybe maybe that was the chess move. It's like, you know what? I yeah. see Timo and I raise you Sterling. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I got a move. guy that can miss. Yeah, I got a guy Your that can move. miss. It's a great photo out there of, uh, like, after the match, uh, speaking of Timo, of Timo, like, pointing to the crest on his jersey, but he's, like, yes. completely off. And it's like he can't even – he even missed that. Like, he missed the, he missed the crest. Like, over here, the crest is over there. But, yeah, yeah. It's – um, man, Pep, I just don't understand anymore, dude. This is, like, the, the third big game, like, in my mind that I can think of that he's just – Decided let's let's just go away from what we've been doing, um, and, and hey, uh, just piggyback off one more thing, De Bruyne, man. That's uh, you know going back to to what our guy said right here uh, with the injury. It uh, really shows how much he meant to this team. Uh, he made it all the way till the second you know second half, but second half he came out and City honestly looked scared to me. After that, they just look completely different. Um, and then at that point, you know, they they're almost playing in like a desperation mode because they know they need. They need to find that goal. Um, and it, at that point, I, I felt like when I was watching them, it, it seemed like it was they were even trying to figure out who that guy would be, and they had no clue. Nobody wanted to step up. Um, so that's that, that's what I got from that. Uh, pretty crazy for a one nothing finish, though. Kind of reminded me a lot last year. Uh, two big teams. You know they're great on the counterattacks. You know they're great at scoring goals. And then you end up with a chess match and a one nothing finish. So um, it, it was an exciting one nothing finish for, for a one nothing finish, though. Say that. I'm going to go ahead and say this was typical EPL, and it kind of reminded me of the Liverpool Tottenham. I was still yeah. not impressed. Um, but I'm going to pass it over Manny. I know he's been sitting on the edge of his seat here. Manny, what are your thoughts on Man City? <laughs> and then we'll get into Chelsea and let you talk your shit. So I'm definitely going to agree with y'all that Rodri definitely should have started off this match. And Pep trying to put Sterling against Reese James. I think he's like Reese James showed it was going to be a it was was not going to work. You might have one or two opportunities, but you pretty much locked them up. Yep. Yeah. I I I don't know how you don't start Aguero. Like you put a Gabriel to Jesus before him coming off the bench, 
and Gabriel Jesus was is he's he's garbage. <laughs> he's not anything. So if you know Chelsea's gonna play in this type of mold, and you need a, like a true number nine to kind of sneak around in that box trying to get in between Thiago Silva and Alphaletta and Rudiger, put a true nine there. If you're trying to play through your wingers into the space and create something, no one's making those type of runs inside the box to get on behind those type of balls with with the with in front of the box. On the goal, uh, I, th- I don't want to hit on Timo. I think Kyle Walker and Stones all don't go to him because they're they respecting his they respect his speed. You know he he's garbage. I'm not I'm not saying he's his scoring rate has been phenomenal, but the dude does immense work off the ball. His work rate's there. He's dangerous enough to make you worry about him. And their city was caught out. Because they're pressing heavily on the right side. We pop it a chill well. Walker has to make a decision. Stone has to make a decision. Who do you pick up? And they're more worried about Chelsea just playing over the top, like wearing and try to hopefully create something. And you go, you know, I think that's where that goal really comes from. Yeah, and I'll tell you what. If we go back to the genesis of that goal, that goal started with a throw-in just past midfield. And they threw it backwards. Yeah. Drove it across the back line. He finds Mount. No, he finds Chilwell high and wide. Chilwell pops Chilwell him out. finds Mount. Yep. And at that point, Man City overcommitted on the rotation. They overcommitted. Yep. You saw them all on the left side where the throw-in was. They swing the ball right, and they overcommit. Kyle Walker steps way too high, which forces Stones to slide over and have to cover as well. Ruben Diaz is forced to cover Timo Werner's one, and it leaves a one-on-one in the middle of the field. Hold on, Let's hold keep- on, hold on. Let me Go mute ahead. my mic while I vomit. <laughs> it's so disgusting. Like I, it's so the first disgusting. thing I said to myself was, where the hell are the other two backs? We don't even have possession right now. <laughs> where is everybody? For, for having a select like, oh, like Guardiola, like we, I think we all agree he's one of the best managers of all time. Right. To see Man City kind of like out their zone, you know, it didn't feel like, like I was watching Man City play. Like, I feel like Guardiola was so – I think it was a little mental thing. You know, Chelsea beat him twice already within the last month or so. Like, he had to, like, try to, you know, recreate the wheel or something, which I, I don't – you know, as Man City fans, like, I can't see why you would not go with what you're just great at. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're smoking everybody else in the best league in the world. It's, it's going to work. <laughs> I saw a really interesting stat that showed the last three games City played Chelsea – the first game they played them, they had two holding midfielders. The second game they played them, they had just Rodri. This game, they decided to go with no true holding midfielders. And it just, it just like you were saying, Manny, you know, maybe Pep was getting too much in his own head because he was focusing too much on those last two games when sometimes it's just not your day. You might have put out your best possible lineup and you had the best possible players, and the other team might have just had the better game. But, you know, I just, I really think, like Booty said, Pep, Pep pulled a Pep. He overthought this. And if we're looking at this goal, I think if Rodri is on the field, Gundogan is very lazy to get back behind the ball and get on defense. If Rodri is on the field, he is dropping into that back line and he's just adding yeah. one more person. If that one more person is just covering that space, Mount's not playing that ball in. Or if he does play the ball in, it's got to be over the top. And that gives Ederson a much better chance to get on the end of that ball. Whereas this ground ball, I gotta give I gotta give Mount credit to to as much as I I don't you know I don't rate him. He played a perfectly weighted ball. Havertz's first yeah. touch was right on the edge of the box. He gave that ball to him right on the edge of the box, and all he had to do was take one touch, and he was free. Yeah, it just it was. But look, like they got caught out. This Go image ahead. here, like, look, look how telling this image is, though. Like, where, yeah. where the hell are the other backs? Like, I realize that okay, so you have Verna, but I mean, here, Timo's here, been blown here. by people. Zinchenko is is pulled all the way to the center of the field. He's he's still five yards behind, but I mean, there's a, I mean, there's like a twenty or thirty yard gap between Zinchenko and is that Kyle Walker? That Stones. I mean, no, that's that's uh, that's Diaz. I, I think Stones is, is up okay. here in the yellow. Stones piece. is yeah. up there. Yeah, he's caught high. Kyle Walker's caught high. No, what, like you, you're not even coming off a of possession. Like you could park a bus in that gap. I mean, have. 
Look at it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And when we go back to last year, Pep did the same shit when they played Leon. He decided to go with a three-man back. And what happened? The inexperience of that system caught up with him. And it left massive gaps for Leon to run into. And they wound up losing because of one inexperienced situation. You know, like when you play a formation all season long, you see a lot of the same situations and you learn and you remember and you keep those in the back of your head. When you go to a new formation and you don't have your CDM with you, who could have easily blocked that channel, if he's dropped back enough, he can just intercept this pass. But Gundogan's back there, so mm-hmm. now Diaz is thinking, oh, Rodri might intercept this pass. No, Gundogan's not Rodri. Gundogan's not going to go and drop in and maybe steal this pass. This was just a classic, I hate to say it, it was a classic Pep, Pep being Pep. You know, it's just, it's unfortunate. To that point, I got to give Tuchel a ton of credit because he had a great philosophy, great formation, offensive, defensive, attacking, all of it. The transitions, it was so great to see. I watched it back the second time. Manny, before I get into it, I want you to talk your stuff. What did you see from Tuchel, and what did you like and not like from the Chelsea side? Really... We could see it since like January. I don't know, like I know how much of y'all games y'all watch besides the Champions League against Chelsea. Tuchel immediately came in and this is like, all right, this is what we're gonna do. It's basically like Tuchel and Conte system together, 2.0. We're gonna make teams very hard to play against us, and we're gonna be very, very particular what we do off the ball as soon as we get it. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's the double six with Conte or Jorginho or Jorginho and Kovacic. It's it's been working all season. Chilwell, ch- you know, transitions to that left wing left wing back and reach James into that right wing back position, I think it's benefited us tremendously. I think really, dude, I just think it was super smart. We closed down the space so well against teams. And, you know, as soon as we get it, we have options out wide. Like, we can stretch them out immediately. Their front three don't stop running. They don't stop making runs for us. And it's Rudiger and us collecting Seattle just so solid and clean on the ball. When we can't play from the back, we do. And it seems like they, they, like we saw against City when the City was trying to press high, we had no problem in trying to play a little longer. And, like, we were still playing well with it. Yeah, I really like – one of the things that I noticed right away from Chelsea is that they remained compact no matter where they were on the oh, field. Yeah. They were just so compact, whether it was a middle block, high block, low block. They all just were very compact. No one was out chasing the ball. They were all dropped in, getting tight. And if if that ball came into that block, they would all press together. It was really amazing. And what I liked a lot was Reese James and Chilwell were dropping back in that back line a lot. And that was creating one-on-ones all over the field instead Mm -hmm. of having that numerical advantage that usually happens when you attack with five against the back four. They were marked up one-to-one all across the back line. Reese okay. James shut down Sterling. Sterling had like one or two opportunities, but that was his own fault that he didn't capitalize on that. One of them, Ederson gave him this gorgeous ball over the top. Oh. And if he would have just touched yeah. it correctly, he would have had a one-on-one with Mendy, and I guarantee Sterling is going to put that away. That's his typical goal. Left side, top of the box, just let him curl it in the back post. He took a bad touch. Reese James that, was there and well, ripped it off his foot. It was amazing. You want to? No, definitely. I think that's. I think that's. You know what, Tuchel was trying to prevent. I think City might have. I don't. You know what you guys think? City was really hoping that maybe get Chelsea out their block. A little bit with this. You know what he was trying to do with all these midfielders. You know overloading these attacking players, and the Chelsea players just really committed to that system and didn't really give City much to play with. Yeah, definitely. And uh, again, man of the match. Got to give credit to Conte. On the ball, off the ball, dudes all over the field. It, it was amazing. At one point, he was in the box winning a header over Stones and Sterling. I was like, how the hell? I went exactly. back and watched it, and he made a run <laughs> from, like, the other half of the field, and he had just timed it perfectly. Sterling sees Conte making this run, just a free run. And I could imagine Pep just being like, Sterling, pick him up. And Sterling just starts hauling ass. And Conte, of course, beats him, gets wins the ball in the air, misses the goal. But he's there creating chaos, being a, just a threat in the box. You just you just can't help but wonder. You know Sterling's probably like, 
So it's probably like he's not he's not gonna score, Pep. Like he's not gonna be, win the header over. Well, I, mean, <laughs> I, I don't think anybody was under was uh, under the impression that Conte was just gonna put one away. I mean, he, he scores <laughs> no, as frequently as Werner does, but I mean, he creates his opportunity. <laughs> and I mean, I have it on good word that you know when Thiago was uh on the on the field and they were treating him that uh Conte was on the sidelines filling up on uh Formula One racing fuel. But the dude the dude does not stop running. And what is he like? All of maybe five foot eight? Yeah. Five, five, six. five, six. five six. That's even more ridiculous. How is he winning headers against against the Stones or a DS? How? It's amazing. <laughs> And you know what's crazy? They dropped this. He's the only Chelsea player to play every single Champions League match. All cool. 13 of them. He yep. has played in every single one. And for the last five, I think, he's won man of the match. He won man of the match against both legs against Real Madrid. And I think he did the same thing yep. against the previous team. I don't remember who it was. Yeah. It might have been. Was it? Uh, was it yeah, I think Dorman? so. I think we are. Did they play? No, nah, Dorman. No, it was, uh, no, Le- Port- it was Atletico Porto. and Porto. Porto. Yeah, that's who it was. It's Porto. Yeah, and also he won best smile. He won best smile. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he did. The dude's got he it won all. Our hearts. Yeah, he's got it all. <laughs> he won our hearts. He's, uh, <laughs> he won our hearts for sure. Uh, and I, the way he reads the game, yeah. man. Off the ball, Conte. Off the ball, he is always. I find it amazing how he's always first to the loose ball. And not only is he first, but he's first to the loose ball, and he's either taking off on a counterattack. Or he's just being being calm, cool, keeping possession, making the right play. It's so rare that you see him make the wrong play. Like he just keeps it so simple. And even if he's under pressure, yeah. even if they're applying, he's he can possess it under pressure. It's so crazy. I just he's so tiny. He's one of these rare players that you know he's so small, but yet he can dominate a midfield. And you just wonder, like, how can a player of his size dominate a midfield? It's really. And this is my hot take for the night. Regards with Conte. I think Conte makes Mount look better than he is. And I'm going to follow that up with, in the Euros, Mount. this is where we're going to see if Mount can fill those shoes that every fucking EPL fan has said he has. I don't think he's got the big shoes. I think Conte's got his foot in there with him, filling those shoes. Hot take for the night. Manny, what's your response to that? <laughs> hey, I, th- I think it's fair. I think it's fair. It's very easy to be really good when you have a war- a world class once in a generation like type of player like N'Golo Kante with you. I'm not gonna say it look you're right. I think the Euros is really gonna show can he take it to the next level? Can he really be that fucking player that, that second coming of Lampard that a lot of Chelsea fans say he is. <laughs> and look, I'll I'll go on record and say it. If Mount shows up for the Euros, I will I will bow down and be like, all right, that's the dude. He's he's the next coming of Remember. Lampard. Remember, we will come back and visit this episode. This is what and, this is what Ocho said. I'll put it on the board. We got a hot take board. We just start writing hot takes, and we revisit them all the time. No, I think I think uh, like you were saying, Conte is just. Uh, I mean, he's just he's one of those once in a lifetime players. He he's definitely going to be somebody that uh, we talk about for uh, a long time, even after he leaves the game. He's yeah, Jim. Jamie Carrier, I, I, I liked it actually. He was like talking about the game. He's like, when we need to like describe like positions with players, right? Like this player, like Ashley Cole, that's, that's what I left like, or myself, whatever you want to say. He's like, I think Angola Conte is going to be that type of player when you're coaching young kids and the up and coming players, like, oh, this is the Conte role. This is how you play this position, <laughs> you know? And I, I think, I think it's so true, man. Like, do, this like, is how you play the Conte. Run everywhere. <laughs> run everywhere. Do not stop. Get three longs. Get three lungs, you know, be five, six, get three lungs. Drive a Mini Cooper. Nope. <laughs> Booty, uh, uh, this just reminded me, I want you to say it. You remember that photo you shared me of Conte's journey? Yes, sir, I do. Can you just el- elaborate on that for us? You know, I'm glad you brought that up because what I was going to touch on is we're going to have a little theme, a little booty theme today, and it's going to be <laughs> streaks and patterns for Chelsea. And we'll start, we'll start with that one. Let me pull that up, actually. Oh, amazing little photo that uh, Hugh's talking about here that breaks down every year that Conte uh, has been playing professionally. Uh, He's been almost successful in every single year that he's been playing. Starting in 2012, 
uh, is when he was in what's called the uh, Championnat National. Uh, that was 2012. So I, I assume that's like maybe like French third tier. Um, yeah. 2013, next year, following year, he's he's moved up to uh, Ligue 2. Ligue 2. Uh, <laughs> <deux. laughs> uh, next year, he's up to uh, Ligue 1 uh, in 2014. 2015, he signs for Leicester City. 2016, in case y'all forgot, remember what Leicester City did? Yeah. Won Champions mm-hmm. League. Uh, the following year, he wins Champions League again, 2017, with Chelsea. Uh, 2018, he wins the World Cup. 2019, he wins Europa. In 2020, he just won Champions League uh, for the 2020-2021 season. Uh, so, if that's not a streak, uh, there's some big tournament coming up. Hugh, help me out here. It's coming up in the next few weeks. You can add to that. Euro. What if he adds a Euro to what we all just mentioned? Man, uh, what a... What a journey coming from absolutely nothing, I'll tell you what. Um, but I'm going to finish up with these uh, last couple streaks, and I'll pass it back to you guys. Let's talk about the man himself, uh, Tuchel, for a second here. Uh, Tuchel just became the third German coach in the last 10 years to lose a final, and the following year rebounds and win the final. Um, with a completely different team. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, because this, the first one is Jupp. Remember Jupp with, uh, with Bayern, lost in 2012. Bounced back in 2013, but that was with Bayern. Uh, Klopp, 2018. Liverpool wins it in 2019. That was both Liverpool. Uh, but Tuchel, two different teams, <laughs> PSG last year, and then this year uh, coming back and winning it with Chelsea. So that's, uh, that's a pretty interesting one right there. Uh, it really is. The guys he's had to beat uh, to, to do this, to make this run. Um, so since he joined Chelsea, here's a list of coaches <clears throat> that Tuchel's beat. Uh, Jose. In a one nil victory, uh, there's another theme in this little in this little uh, little theme right here too. A theme <laughs> on theme, it's like Inception. Uh, <laughs> Simeone, another one, uh, one nil win. Then Klopp, one nil. Ancelotti, two nil. Simeone again, two nil. Uh, Pep, one nil. Zidane, two nil. Pep, two one. Pep, one nil. Out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine matches that we just mentioned, one goal conceded. So that's the crazy thing I think that he's not going to get enough credit for. We mentioned it on a couple episodes, but you talk about this German-style coach, a guy who likes to, uh, to press high, loves that counterattack as well, loves to score goals. Uh, but it's not going to get mentioned that uh, ever since he's come in, he's completely changed that back line, and they, they, they don't concede goals anymore. I mean, how many clean sheets does Mendy have now? We've lost count. Um, yeah, it's, in the teens, for sure. I mean, he, yeah. he had the most clean sheets of, of all of UCL, that's yeah. for sure. It's crazy. It's Nine crazy. matches, I think. Cody, to add on to that list of coaches, I will say the only coach that he has not beat is our boy from Leeds, Marcelo hmm. Bielsa. Hmm. There you go. <laughs> hey, just saying. Was it a draw? You know? It was a goal? nil-nil draw. No goals scored. There you go. And the man of the match was the young French keeper, Meslier. Oh, shit. Yeah, so I like if that. I was Pep... I would have gone and watched that fucking game and been like, what did my master do? How did he keep Tuchel to a nil-nil draw? Just saying. Yep. Team, <laughs> yep. Leeds is a good Le- team, Leeds but I think Man team. City has got way more quality all around the pitch. And if you Really? Could just- <laughs> oh, yeah. They're just throwing money oh, everywhere. You talk- they, better be- they better have more quality than fucking Leeds. <laughs> they do. They're such a moldable team, and I think I think that's actually a pitfall for City. Ooh, it's like good take. I could really, you know, I can mold this team into pretty much anything. I mean, how about what other fucking team goes around? I don't even need a striker. I'm just, I'm gonna have midfielders everywhere. Midfielders in the back. Midfielders in the front. The big midfield sandwich. <laughs> I mean, it, it worked throughout the Champions League when we saw them play. Uh, was it PSG? Man City PSG? Yeah. He no. played He the played De Bruyne. Yeah. He didn't play any strikers. We didn't see Sterling. We didn't see Aguero. We didn't see Gabriel Jesus. It was just, it was it was six midfielders, and, and he won. He did a great job. Uh, it, was, it was really impressive. Uh, you know, like, Pep, uh, we'll see you next year maybe? I don't know. I mean, I think he's got the formula. Hopefully we'll uh, – I think he's definitely going to go and get a true number nine. Uh, I think he's he's hit the end of the road here with trying to Holland. play his his 
His man, Holland. I think Holland. Lewandowski would be a great little buy as well. Yeah. Um, there's there's plenty of strikers out there that that would fit Pep's system. To that point, I would add that we saw what happened when there was a true number nine in Pep's system. It was Laton, and it didn't work out. Pep started to make it work, but then you know one of his other players got a little jealous, so we Pep had to accommodate Messi. But um, I would love to see Pep kind of bring that Bayern style into Manchester City with having a number nine, like a Lewandowski surrounded by just a, a very talented group of midfielders. We saw his success at Bayern. I would love to see that happen in the EPL. You know, have give him a target number nine, not just like an Aguero or a Gabriel Jesus, someone who can win the ball when you're going direct, can win those aerial du- duels, can hold the ball up, lay it back for De Bruyne or Gundogan, whoever you need. I think Pep would thrive if he had someone like that because he's forced to build out of the back and not send those long balls into a target man. He's We saw against Chelsea, he all, he was the only long balls he had were trying to beat that back line, and Sterling just wasn't wasn't the man for the job. You know, he tried his best, but it just wasn't successful. So uh, would love to see that. Love to see Tuchel back at Chelsea next season. I think they're going to have some money to spend. They're probably one of the best teams as far as balancing a budget. They've got tons of players on loan. You know they'll have money. We just, AC Milan just sent them 28 mil. We just bought Tamori from <laughs> AC Milan. Manny, good bre- good business, brother. Appreciate you. We love that man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm glad he's I'm glad he's playing well, man. I'm glad. I like Hot him. take. You know who love won't it. be there next season? Probably Conte because it's Chelsea. Dear God, Conte is not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> that would be that would be really interesting. I tell you what, because I know a lot of teams are drooling over Conte. They would love to have him. I think there was talks that they are actually going to um, restructure his contact, his contract. Uh, and you better, you just hope they pay that man because he's not going to ask for much. You know, he's so humble. The dude was picking trash. Literally came from the bottom, started from the bottom. Now he's in the Champions League final. Get him what Speaking he's of being in the Champions League final, one thing that no one has mentioned yet on the podcast is our boy, Captain America. Getting in there. Christian Pulisic, first American male to reach the Champions League final and win it. What a journey. Uh, I think, personally, I think he's paving the way for a lot of Americans. I think he, at least, if anything, he's showing Americans that, uh, the, the young Americans, that, you know, this is what you can get to if you work hard and you have a good support system. With that being said, I think Pulisic had an amazing support system to get where he is. Uh, one of my buddies, mm-hmm. the uh, owner of Crescent City Football Club, posted a really hot take on Pulisic's journey to uh, the, the Champions League final. The, mo- the big one for me is that his grandfather is Croatian. So he was able to claim Croatian citizenship, which allowed him easier access to play in Europe because he didn't need to use his American passport and they didn't need to go through that paperwork. Another one being that he grew up in England, a country that is all about soccer, football. Uh, And then the third one for me that is very unique is that his father played professional soccer, I believe, and his mom was a collegiate soccer player. So both of these parents influencing him as he's growing up. He's growing up in, in, in England, a heavily predominant, a predominantly heavy soccer country. And then he's got this Croatian passport, which allows him easy access into Europe to be able to play soccer. Uh, gentlemen, what are y'all's thoughts on that? I'll pass it to uh, the Chelsea man first. Manny, what are your thoughts on Pulisic? Uh, I think he's class, man. I think what he's done is showing, like you said, that Amer- the new generation of American players can't play at the highest level. You got Pulisic there. You got McKinney at Juvie. You got Des at Barcelona. Like, it's definitely opening up for us in the American uh, generation and the next one's coming up. Uh, I didn't know about his Croatian passport and stuff. Honestly, dude, I didn't, I didn't know about that. I think it's pretty cool. And I think I think that's spot on. That's, it makes it a lot easier. Me and you both know you, like, coaching, you know, at the club here locally, how hard it is to kind of get kids looked at. You know, and it's a bunch of talent down here and across the nation. But I'm really happy that a player like that was able to get that exposure such a young age in that type of environment. Right. Totally agree. 
Josh, what are your thoughts on Young Pooley? Uh, well, like Manny was saying, definitely class. Uh, but it's you know it's a double edged sword too. Uh, United States is still not a soccer country, and you just highlighted a few mm-hmm. examples of how incredibly fucking hard it is to go from good to great. And um, I think I think if a lot of people read more than just the cliff the cliff notes on how Pulisic got to where he is, uh, they're probably going to be more scared than before they read. Uh, like, I, you yeah. know what? I had to leave home when I was 16 years old. Uh, I just had to have a grandpa yeah. who was Croatian. I just had to grow up in England. Like, shit, I'm already, uh, like, I'm. A, we're talking right now. I'm looking at uh, people who want to buy my house so I can move to England. <laughs> and I mean, just just growing up in the Lafayette area, I mean, uh, I, I knew plenty of guys that uh, if they really wanted to get that exposure, you got to go to North Texas or two, three states away to Florida just to be able to get that level of exposure so you could maybe play at a decent school on the East Coast. And uh, I think it's tragic for um, for American sports that we don't we don't emphasize uh, a game as beautiful as soccer uh more heavily than we do and uh you know we it's it's all about the benjamins uh everybody wants to get paid uh even if it's from a six-year-old uh you know yeah. hold him at gunpoint take his 500 dollars for the season and uh if if he pans out he pans out if he doesn't pan out then um you know what we got your 500 bucks so <laughs> right it's i mean That's it's, it's well a rough said. journey it's a rough journey yeah, yeah. in the states it is yeah, it's well said. Booty, thoughts on Pooley? Champions League final, youth soccer. Bundle it all into one big, uh, you know, all, all thoughts within two, three minutes? No. Um, and this, this, is a, <laughs> this is a topic we always touch on every now and then, and it, it's, it usually goes off the rails into its own episode, so I'll try to, I'll try to condense it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's too much politics, too much money, uh, unfortunately. I mean, I don't, I don't feel like every kid is going to have that opportunity. Some kids are – I mean, that's a situation almost, I think we could agree, the way we were kind of structured in that conversation just now. Uh, he, he kind of had a couple things he was born into there um, that kind of kind of helps him with that situation, unfortunately. But uh, this is something my wife and I always debate about, and I actually love her take on this. Uh, but, you know, it would be great if we kind of had some sort of academy system here um, for kids who, hey, you can't read a book, but you're great at soccer? Cool. Like, go play soccer. Like you shouldn't have to sit in chemistry class, you know, put all your, put all your <laughs> yeah. focus in soccer <laughs> if you're good at soccer, you know, um, that, you know, yeah. and we could sit here for days and just may, maybe one day it'll, it'll come to that. Who knows? Maybe, I don't know what it's going to take, but, um, different, different topic for a different day, but, but pull, pulley himself man, uh, almost had one, almost had one when he actually came on. Um, Oof. so close, man. Um, beautiful great, opportunity. Great, yeah. Great, great awareness by, uh, Ederson. Um, reflexes were on point there but he was a, if he was a second off that was going in but but man would have been the roof would have fucking came off of the united states uh if that would have happened that would have been so fun but but man i gotta give my man credit dude because when he came from bundesliga i had my doubts because of him going to epl he could barely stay healthy in a bundesliga and you're gonna move to this taxing the craziest league in the world um but guess what he's still getting hurt and it's still working out for him this little super sub role he's kind of taking it under his wing and i know he said you know he'd rather be starting of course who doesn't but but hey this little super sub role might be working out for his situation you know play every 10 games here and there hurt yourself you're off three to four but you're only you're not even playing the whole game it, it's kind of working at his advantage a little bit in a weird way um but yeah i mean of course i'd love to see him out there and of course i was one of those people bitching beforehand like like man how could you have Havertz out there <laughs> I, I had a pulley come on man well we saw why so we saw why so but I'm yeah. I'll just sit down. And I'll let you have it. <laughs> Go I'm gonna ahead, say I'm gonna say it's working out for him in a, a not so weird way. I think he's uh, you know he's got that youth, that explosive energy, that confidence. That uh, whenever he comes on the field, and uh, you know you're in the 75th, 80th minute, and now you have to deal with a a, Pul- a Pulisic who is as explosive as he is, and as skilled on the ball as he is, and as confident with the ball as he is. I mean that's you know 
you, you take off a Timo Werner where you're expecting him to uh, to shank it or pop it right to the keeper, and all of a sudden you have to deal with Pulisic. It's like crap. My mm-hmm. legs feel like sandbags, and now yeah. I have to deal with Pulisic. Yeah. <laughs> it it works. I think he saw it most. I think he saw it most against Real Madrid in the second leg. We're all like, how is Pulisic not starting? He just scored, you know, the first goal against Real Madrid. What the hell? And he comes in around the same time, 70th, 65th, around that time. And it's putting Ramos and all of them in that back Real Madrid back line on the skate. Yeah. <laughs> like, he he turned him inside out. Ramos is, and I mean, he's he's such an experienced back, but Pulisic drove right at him. Uh, yeah, I completely agree with I'll that. I'll tell you what, somebody said uh, watching Pulisic go up against Sergio Ramos was reminiscent of Ronaldinho putting Sergio Ramos through the spin cycle. There was that <laughs> like hesitation, his <laughs> knees clicked, and it was like, whoa, Circa, no, like damn nostalgia shaved, right there. <laughs> no tattoos, young Ramos just sitting in a lawn chair on the field because <laughs> Ronaldinho sat him down. I love watching Ramos had a little PTSD right there. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. Ramos was like, oh, God, flashbacks. Yeah. No. <laughs> so speaking of which, uh, Manny, to piggyback, he did, in fact, sub in around the exact same minute for Timo Werner. And, I mean, like we said, you know, made an impact within – came on in the 67th, scored a goal, or made the assist to mount in the 85th. So 23 – no, I'm sorry, 18 minutes. In 18 minutes, he had already given an mm-hmm. assist and – Made, made that was the dagger. That was the dagger that sent Real yep. Madrid home and, and put Chelsea through the map. Uh, again, I, I'm really excited for for Pulisic. Um, and going back to what your your injury concern, Booty, it kind of helps us out as Americans because if Pulisic is healthy, that means he gets to play for Team USA. Yep. And I would much rather him play for Team USA than Chelsea. No offense to uh, <laughs> Chelsea fans out there, but. Uh, that's that's my number one team at the end of the day. When when they do qualify for a fucking tournament, uh, I will cheer for them. Mm, mm, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but in, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, any more thoughts? Anybody want to share any more little uh, random facts from that game? I thought this was uh, this was a typical EPL game. I wasn't too impressed, but uh, a good final nonetheless. No, I agree with you. As soon as I saw that uh, Chelsea were going to the final, uh, City were going to the final together, I was excited. And then also, like, shit, I'm going <laughs> to watch City play Chelsea again. Like, give me, give me something new, guys. Like, where, where's VAR to call back a goal so that, you know, maybe Real can go in again, you know? Right. <laughs> Oh, because Ryle, Ryle, seeing Ryle in the final is... <laughs> yeah, that, that definitely would have helped Real if, uh, if there was no VAR. We probably would have seen them in another final this year. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> hey, I can okay. admit it. I can admit it. I remember that Bayern game. I know that Juve game. There was a few games where VAR was around. Real Madrid's probably not making it to the final. I definitely can admit that. But, uh, hey, they took advantage of no VAR. So let's let's go through it. Uh, while we're at the end of this Champions League final, we got to uh, mention that uh, the current soccer in the world going on right now, we have the U21 Euro World Cup going on. Today they had the quarterfinals. Uh, let me quickly pull up these scores. Oh, France. Uh, I know France got knocked out. Booty? France got knocked out. France got Ooh. knocked out in the last minute by the by the Dutch. Yeah. I actually I got to see that. I took off half the day today. That was an amazing finish. Boadu, this young Dutch player from PSV. Uh I'm sorry, uh AZ Alkmaar. Uh he is gonna be in Champions League next year. Uh the Italians lost to Portugal in a fucking shootout. That was an insane game. That was a four to three extra time thriller. That was really exciting. I also want to say that um, I believe Germany beat Denmark. And then I'm trying to do this from memory. Yeah, Germany beat Denmark in PKs and Spain beat Croatia in regular time. So looking forward, I think the next games are on Wednesday. I believe it's going to be Spain versus Portugal and Germany versus the Netherlands. Look forward to that. 
And then very soon in the future, we've got the professional uh, men's Euros, which will be kicking off on June 11th. I believe that's a Friday. But that will be Booty and I's boys, the Italians against the Welsh. will be a very exciting game. I think that one's going to be going down. Uh, I'm not sure of the time, but that will be on Friday, June 11th. Uh, gents, while we got you, love getting some hot takes and predictions. Who are your top four for the Euros this year? We'll go to Josh first. Who are your top four? I'm more of a usual suspects kind of guy, but I think uh, my one surprise is probably, I, I think, Turkey. So I think uh, I think Turkey's going to be in there. I'm going to give uh, England for sure. Um, Belgium. I would love to say Denmark. I don't think Denmark. Probably, probably another Germany. Okay, so let me get let me do this rundown real quick. You got Turkey, England, Germany, Belgium, or Belgium, Germany. Yes. Okay. No, no, no. Well, not, I, well, I mean, not not necessarily in that order, but I, not I in that Turkey's order. I was just surprise. trying to remember your order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Manny, who are your top four for the Euros? Uh, Spain. It's really hard not to say France. <laughs> France. I think Portugal is a really solid chance. But my hot take, England winning it. Mason Mount player of the tournament. <laughs> hey, man. You hey, if it happens, yourself. I'll be the first one. I'll be the first one to tell you he was the best player. You I will be the first yourself. one. I love being uh, proven wrong about players. I just don't think he – we'll see, man. We'll see. Uh, if that happens, booty. I'm giving out handies in the bathroom, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. That's all I'm booty. saying. Man. No glove. Don't no glove. do not Booty. do not go near any bathroom holes at all. <laughs> wait, like why, wait, start. those are bad. Yeah. Wait, those are bad. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, snake, the snake the holes. <laughs> the snake holes. It's always been dark. I never knew what those were. I uh, know. Yeah, stick your head in there. <laughs> yeah, stick an eye in there. <laughs> Booty, who are your top four for euros? Yeah, some people gonna end up looking like my eyeless cat. Um, I would say, uh, I would say, uh, I really like, uh, I really, I keep looking at the squads and, uh, Portugal just keeps jumping off the map to me. Just jumping right off the page at me. Um, I'd say Portugal, uh, I got to stick France in there because I don't feel like the lineups change very much. And, uh, no. I'm gonna throw Italy in there as well. Uh, undefeated in qualifying. Um, looking really nice too. A lot of guys that. Uh, are those Serie A guys on the lesser known teams? Um, lots of guys on the on those Fiorentinas and the and the Romas and uh... that kid Zinola playing good. Is yep. Zinola from Roma. So he unfortunately he just got cleared to return, but he just got cleared from his second ACL tear yeah. in like two years. Yeah. Ooh. So I think Italy Ooh. is going to leave him off the squad and just hope that he's healthy for the 2022. But he is uh, – keep your eyes on him because he is a really good – he's a really good he's player. Class, he's class. Huh? Jose Mourinho is going to be coaching him next year. Yep. Very excited to see that. Yep. <laughs> Very excited to see that. I got to throw – I got to throw Belgium in there too, man, just because uh, they keep seeming to, to keep just creeping a little closer every every uh, major tournament we've had last few years. So, um, it, I like that turkey pick uh, from Josh as like a, a little underdog. Um, or I would say for underdog, keep an eye on, uh, Ukraine, uh, Shevchenko. Thank you. Running, running right. the, uh, running the reins. He's got the reins All over right. there as coach. So also another yeah. undefeated team through qualifying. Yes. Yep. Sneaky. Yep. I'm going to go. I got to go with my boys, CR seven, Portugal. Got to go with France, the Italians. And then as a dark horse, uh, Ukraine. I don't know why. Ukraine or Sweden. I think Sweden are going to come and uh, be really sneaky. They got a lot of quality. Uh, Kulachevsky from Juventus. Who, uh, Zlatan has been pushing the coach. You have to start him every game. So um, I'll go Sweden as my uh, my dark horse in those top four. I just love their fish. Come on. 
<laughs> I got a good candy. <laughs> I love uh, the furniture. I think... It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. I Have think that'll it? do it. Uh, we've currently covered all the most recent soccer stuff going on. The U21s is very exciting. There's a lot of quality. I heard the announcers say there's $1.5 billion worth of players in those eight <laughs> teams that we're playing today. So um, lots of quality, lots of highly rated players. Uh, Portugal are the favorites. France were second. But they got knocked out by the Dutch. The Dutch look really good. But uh, be on the lookout for those U21s. That's always a lot of fun to see those uh, rising stars get a chance to shine there. Uh, Booty, you got any final things to talk about? Oh, no. It's just it, we've reached that time. It's that time. We've reached that time. It's that time, baby. Another one in the books. Uh, guys, we always close it out. Every episode we close it out with a little shout-out. So you can give a shout-out to anybody in the world, fictional, non-fictional, lady, man. Soccer player, non-soccer player, doctor, love them, nurse, hate them, hate them, love them. You like, you want, you want to shout out and just, just you know, jump on uh, Hitler and beat the shit out of him. Go for it. That's what it's here for. <laughs> so, is that still considered a shout out? What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. You can. Yes, we have had guests come on and just dog other people. Just be like, I fucking hate that guy. Blah blah. Fuck back. Fuck fuck. And you're like, all right, good shout out. All right, who's next? Hey, yeah. hey, that, that's actually not. That's not bad. I'm going to give a shout out to LeBron James. You Ooh. fucking hypocrite. <laughs> Damn. Hey, spot on. Next. Spot on. <laughs> All right. I don't, I don't need I'm to gonna explain myself. Sh- Everybody knows. I like that one. They know. They know. Dude, dude. If, I don't even need to say anything. If he had, if oh, that a bed yeah. with China already, come on. If, yeah, dude, if he, he if he got popcorn thrown on him the other day, he would have been taken out of there in a wheelchair, dude. You threw popcorn on me. <laughs> nah, you don't play in La Liga. Come on. Get up. <laughs> That's <Yo>. right. <laughs> That's right. Nice. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna get I'm gonna jump in here with my shout out. I gotta give a shout out to Tiago Silva. Oof, the yeah. AC Milan <laughs> Rossoneri <laughs> center back. Man, he's come a long way. Glad to see him get a Champions League trophy in <laughs> his, his career. I think. This is uh this is something that he has earned over a long time. He's been battling with with teams that just just couldn't help him. I mean, he would just always put his his body on the line and he was just doing his best. Anytime he got to the Champions League, I could uh I could depend on him, whether it was through AC Milan or PSG. He was just gonna be there and be the leader and be one of the best players on the field. So glad to see him win it with uh with Chelsea, especially the way that that Tuchel lost last year and won this year. Tuchel and Thiago <laughs> made that journey from PSG to Chelsea and uh, lost in the final and then won in the final. So really glad to see Thiago Silva, the Brazilian, get that uh, Champions League trophy in his trophy case. Hugh locking down the Brazilians, baby, as always. Yeah. As always. <laughs> always. Man- always shouting out. Manny Fresh, what you got, dude? I uh, want to shout out Pep for being Pep <laughs> and fucking up his tactics. And you know, <laughs> make me the happiest dude on Saturday. <laughs> Shout out to my tattoo artist who's going to do my Champions League trophy tattoo on my cat. Oh no! So, <laughs> oh yeah, 2012, 2021 is going to be on my life forever. Yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah. Okay. 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 <laughs> oh fuck yeah! Take nice. pictures of that. We'll, that. we'll post that, man. Let, let us know when it's done. Seriously. We'll post it all over the site, you, bro. all over Facebook. Booty, show them your tattoo. I got you. Uh, the most recent one? Yeah, the most recent one. Uh, y'all Super Mario fans in there? Yes. There you go. I dig it. It's a Super Mario it. tattoo. Super Mario. <laughs> yes, sir. Super Mario. Yes, sir. Some fresh ink. All right. My shout out today is for Hugh. Hugh, I know you're a big fan. Oh. This, this is a big fan of yours as well. <laughs> the bag of chips. Shout out to a bag of chips. <laughs> Oh, fuck you, dude. You hear that crunch? It was actually a bag of cookies. It doesn't have quite the same. It doesn't have quite the same crunch and noise level. But yes, to to our footy fiends out there, we we once had a guest that uh, he was losing his mind because this guy was just fidgeting with everything possible, and uh, 
He's like, <laughs> you can see him tearing out his own mustache. Oh my oh, yeah. god! I was kind of, I was kind of like half asleep that episode. It was like very early, and so I was just like, yeah, this dude just doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. You know? And like, he was just like, like he puts his stuff on me. He looks like he's like, does he have a bag of chips? What is he doing? <laughs> He's a bag. I think it was like, is he straight, a bag of fucking chips? Straight ah. Lewis Black. <laughs> yeah. Just, Come on. <laughs> I was losing it, man. At that, was was, at that point, I was, I was laughing my ass off, too, but like not trying to <laughs> be like, ha, 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 you're pissed. <laughs> <laughs> but you just, oh, <laughs> the bag like, of chips, he man. Like, can, you know, controls himself, and then like, he takes his mute off. He's like, uh, you know, let's say his name was Tony. Like, Tony, do you have any other things around you that, you know, you're touching or, you know? <laughs> Shout out to the bag of chips episode, right. man. That, right. I took a, I spent a lot of time editing that bag of chips out of that episode. I just got to let you know. If you went back, you could not find that episode because I took every single crinkle out of that episode. It's also why I didn't want to laugh too hard. I'm like, I know he has to like go back and like find all this shit like for hours. Fuck. <laughs> that was a long one, but it was a good one. That was the AS Roma. I don't think we'll yeah. ever talk about AS Roma. They got a they got a long ways to go before they're in Champions League. That was a fun <laughs> one, yeah. And, they, and, they, and of course, they, our buddy, uh, our buddy, he was he was a cool guy too. He was a cool guy too. He just didn't. Yeah, he was. He wasn't completely understand. You know, there's a little language barrier there, so I wouldn't completely understand. But it was great. It was great. But. Yeah. Well, no, gentlemen, yeah. thank you guys for uh, for stepping in, showing us your fetish, stretching your feet with us, guys. We appreciate that. Appreciate it, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yo, I do like getting a little weird time. with some feet. So. <laughs> <laughs> you were giving her, I mean, you already had us covered on the hand stuff, so now we've got feet stuff covered, too. So it's a good thing. Well, that, you know, that's, only, that's only if England win and Mason Mount that's is right. fan of the match. That's right. Then then it's just, it's handy for everybody. It's fucking happening. <laughs> everybody. Everybody. Look, I have all these hands just for you. Manny's going to get the fucking KY off of fucking Amazon.com, like the industrial size bottle from old school. <laughs> He's going to be fucking ready for this shit. Uh, it comes with prime delivery. It will be coming. Oh, it will be coming. Oh, it will be coming home. <laughs> coming around the For sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Well, man, that's that's all we got for you here at the Footy Fetish. Uh if you aren't following us folks, go follow us. Uh Twitter for the Twatters, we're on on Instagram, Facebook, we are at Footy Fetish Show. If you like Nova Acai, tell them all about it, Hugh. Nova Acai, greatest acai in the city. St- stamp of approval from the Brazilian community out in Chalmette. Best acai in the city. Come check us out, get a taste, let us know. I'm about to eat some for a little bedtime snack. Mm. But in the meantime, uh, next episode, Q and I are going to dive into those Euro rosters. We'll get a little crazier with the Euros since they are steady approaching. Uh, but other than that, man, that's all I got. And you guys have been great. Thank you guys again. Thank you, guys. Shout out to Parlays for having us this past Saturday. Uh, other than that, uh, this has been the Footy Fetish Show, where the fetish is real and the footy is soccer. Peace out, Boy Scouts. <laughs>